always be thinking about how you can stimulate action with any data that you're sharing about customer experience or marketing. You want to engage your stakeholders internally to pay attention so that we're better attuned and more nimble as an organization for meeting our customers' evolving needs better than our competitors can. So if you're showing data such as this with averages, uh, I would recommend to probably stop doing that and show data more like this with percentages. What percentage of the customers were in the top box or top couple of boxes and how much money is represented by those? You may find that the money represented is uh, sometimes non-linear because you may have some core growth customers mixed in with the other customers. So you might want to separate that out because if you can take your core growth customers, which a very similar concept is your high potential employees, and make sure that you're getting and creating an excellent experience for them, that is assuring your future growth because you're relying on them for the sustainability and the, the um, robustness of your organization's strength. So this is a real key in you can be even more powerful if you juxtapose that with who's unhappy and how much money does that represent. And this is a very stimulating way to um, convey information to managers and to track the progress and to create that immediate connection with what you're doing in customer experience and money. That's what we're after. So in in closing, I wanted to uh, remind you, what is the definition of customer experience? Customers' realities in selecting, getting, and using a solution that enables their intended outcome is what customer experience is. Customer experience management is where we're closing the gap between the realities that customers experience, so their perceptions and what they actually tasted, smelled, heard, uh, felt, and uh, saw, divided by their expectations. So when we can close the gap between the realities and the expectations, then that's where we are uh, having almost automatic customer experience excellence. And in order to do that, we need to remember that the customer experience maturity scale is where we're mobilizing. That's where people are now. They're collecting data. They're doing things with the data. Um, but they're not necessarily making it a way of life by operationalizing. They're not really aligning the data to each group that needs to find it relevant and resonant for them. And um, we're not really embedding these customer experience insights and criteria into the way of life across the company, how we run the business in total. So these are uh, real keys because if we are focused on these levels, we will present data in a way that will help us achieve that. So I like to think of it as customer experience leadership being a notch above customer experience management as we've known it to date. Customer experience leadership is company-wide alignment to customers' expectations, which is so necessary if we want to prevent problems, if we want to really see the big money by having a prevention mindset, a lifetime value mindset across our company. And this means that we are making customer experience a team sport uh, by aligning to these very vital stakeholders' expectations. So to solve your metric silos, uh, we've talked touched on a lot of things here that uh, address what we talked about at the beginning. And I welcome you to learn more about that by joining our Experience Value Exchange. As you can see here, the things on the left are ease of doing business as success factors, getting and keeping customers with a lifetime value mindset, data and metrics that work to stimulate customer-centered action, and growth and innovation through enterprise use of customer experience insights for every growth strategy and every innovation strategy. We'll talk about that next week. Here we have the ease of work criteria, getting everyone on the same page, uh, respecting interdependencies, um, and driving commitment. So the things on the far right are accountability factors. The things in the middle are alignment factors. And the things on the left are agility factors. 
And I welcome you to join us in the value exchange that you can build these competencies in your customer experience team, your marketing team, experience, employee experience team, and uh, so on, because these are the, the skills we need in the 2020s to cope with the quickly evolving expectations and situations that we find ourselves in in the marketplace today. And, um, and as you become uh, proficient in these areas, you'll find that you're not only enjoying your work much more, but you're making a greater strategic impact across the company. 